Hey there, it's Jen from EmpathicMastery.com and to get a copy of the book, head on over to EmpathicMasteryBook.com. You can see the hard copy over here behind me. And uh, this is a book that was written for this time. This is a book that has all the tools and information and things that has taken me a good solid 30 plus years to sort out and a lot of trial and error. I wanted to jump on fairly quickly this evening to talk about breaking things down into bite-sized chunks and staying in the moment instead of projecting into the future and into the past and also trying to do all the things at once. And I was thinking about, so this is prompted because I had um, gotten a request and I had received an email and I had responded to the email and I had given and I had responded with a number of links and a number of resources and a number of things that were just like, go do this, go do this, go do this, go do this. And then they wrote back and they were like, but give me more. And I was like, within a couple hours and I had given them literally like, hundreds and hundreds of resources. And I thought to myself about how so often we get into this place where we want to just keep on adding more and more and more and more and more stuff to our plate. And that what I know to be absolutely true when it comes to really understanding empathic mastery and when it comes to really doing our deep healing work is that when we slow down and we break things into very tiny little doable steps and we get really comfortable with one step at a time, we actually get way more headway and cover a lot more ground than we do when we keep on trying to add more and more and more and more. And I was thinking back to the days when I was first learning how to shift from emotional eating and shift from food being kind of the thing that I used to deal with my anxiety and to deal with all the feelings that were going on for me as an un, sort of an unidentified, highly sensitive, empathic person. And I remember this moment where I had this revelation that I would start to get really freaked out about my plate around a third of the way in to what I was eating. I would actually start fantasizing about going for seconds and getting more food on my plate before even half of it was consumed. And what I realized is that when you're not in, when I'm not in the moment, when I am not uh, absorbing and integrating the things that I need to be absorbing and integrating, because I'm thinking about the next thing, it's like, I don't get the benefit or the nourishment that is there for me of what is already there. Like I'm not getting my daily bread and I'm getting all anxious and panicking about something in the future. And the thing was, whenever I was able to give myself permission to slow down and focus on the one bite that was in front of me and the next bite and the next bite, like a good nine times out of 10, by the time I was done with the plate that I had served, I was good. Like I wasn't hungry still. But as long as I was putting, as long as I was focusing on the quantity on the plate, instead of the experience of what I was receiving, I would often be worrying about getting more. What does this have to do with being highly sensitive and empathic while in the middle of coronavirus? So what I believe it has to do with is that right now we are being given 
a daily bread. We are being given our daily tasks and the things that need to get done. And as long as we stay focused on the next thing and then the next thing after that and really focusing on taking baby steps, like chunking it down, we can get through this. The thing that really starts to, I know for me, send my panties in a wad is when I start projecting into the future. When I start taking news, information, things that I see on Facebook and turning it into conclusions and starting to do what I refer to in the book as awfulizing. The thing is, It's entirely possible that there are going to be some pretty wild things that are going to be happening in the future. But I have absolutely no idea what they are going to be. All I know is that right now is a time of uncertainty. And right now is a time where things are not the way they used to be. And what I also know is that I can focus on what is before me and wait for the rest to be revealed or I can make myself absolutely miserable. And so what I keep coming back to is the most important thing I can do right now is I can focus on being here now and I can focus on doing the tasks that are before me. So like for example, I have a couple things I need to mail to people. So what that means is really simply, I need to write their addresses on an address label. I need to put it on an envelope. I need to write a note card that says, hey, how you doing? I need to put the stuff in there. And then I need to plan my trip to the post office. I also need to empty the dishwasher. I need to wash hand wash a pan that has got food really cooked onto it. And at a certain point in a couple hours, I need to go to bed. And then I can wake up in the next tomorrow and I will be able to do what is before me, which is working with a client, talking to a possible new client, and probably like, doing something like writing some kind of content for Instagram and Facebook, thinking about what else I'm going to be doing, and going down and starting to work on getting my recording booth set up so that the audiobook, which is in the works, can start happening. And it's like, but you know, I could be thinking, I could be projecting way into the future. I could be thinking about book launch, you know, launching the audio book and, oh my God, and I have to find an editor and I have to do this and I have to do that. And what if all these other things happen? What if blah, 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 blah. And what happens once I get to that place where I start going too far into the future is that I start to spin out and I start to get really confused and I start to get really overwhelmed and I stop being able to function. Because the thing, hey there, Tanya, welcome. The thing about when we're in a time of uncertainty, it's completely natural for us human beings to want to try to figure things out by either looking for evidence of things in the past that are similar and then sort of like extrapolate from that or take or do our empathic clairvoyant projecting into the future prophecy thing and try to see what's happening in the timelines ahead of us and imagine things. The challenge right now is that it's really, there's so much fear spinning around in the world. There's so much, which is showing up as things like exhaustion, rage, indignation, um, frantic, hectic, I got to do all the things Sometimes it feels like anxiety and fear, but a lot of times it shows up as other kinds of things. But there's like so much heightened emotion right now. There's so much added intensity that it's harder for us to use our gifts to look forward into the future and get an accurate peek at what could happen than it usually is. 
because there are a lot more people who are projecting into the future and trying to figure out what's coming. People who don't necessarily have a lot of experience with looking into the future. And right now, it's kind of like, it's sort of like we've got beer goggles on or, you know, we've got these sort of like dark glasses that are affecting what we're seeing. So I really want to invite you to join me in returning back to the here and now, like really bringing yourself back. And breath is one of the most powerful things Yes, being in the moment, Victoria is saying so beautifully, being in the moment means being able to see the beauty around us and it keeps us going. Um, you know, it's like we can choose to look for the beauty or we can look for the problems. We can choose to look for the things to be grateful for today or we can look for the things that we're worried about and lacking. I am not saying that by looking for beauty and looking for the things to be grateful for that, you know, that I'm talking about being Susie cream cheese with, you know, sunshine coming out of my butt. I am not talking about denying the truth of the fact that this is a very uncertain and challenging time. There are people dying. There are people grieving. There are people getting scared. There are people who are frustrated. There are people who are just completely like, I do not know what is going on. But we get to choose every single day to look for the miracles. So if you are inclined to pray the way I am inclined to pray, I invite you to try praying for things like, please, higher power, whatever name you use for your higher power, help me to be here now. Let me be here fully, completely. Let me breathe into this moment and be present. Let me be fully present now. May I have all my, my radiance, my strength, my power here and now. And may I behold miracles as they are unfolding. Help me to see the miracles that are happening and help me to trust the, the process as it occurs. Allow me to adapt. Allow me to adjust. Allow me to accept this powerful time. These are the things that make it easier to stay here and to kind of continue to do the things that need to be done on a daily basis. There's a saying, before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. And so for all of us, that may look a little bit different. For me right now, it's getting things together to record the audio book, which I'm so excited about. Um, I had a really good meeting with a, a professional narrator, um, just the other day to uh, to sort of to get some support and mentoring about how to go about doing it the best way possible. I will be recording it because I've known from the beginning it's I need to do that. And I was it was really awesome to talk with her because she's like um, actually one of like in the top of the field. I'm very blessed to know this person. So I'm very excited. So one of the things on my plate is starting to prepare to record the audiobook. Another thing that's on my plate is to starting to prepare raised beds so that we can grow more vegetables this year so that we have more of more control over our own food. And even if you are living in a city, there are still like window gardens, there are still things you can do. You can grow a couple tomato plants you can grow a couple like zucchini plants zucchini plants i can pretty much guarantee you <laughs> if you grow one or two zucchinis you'll have more than you know what to do with um, unless you've got a massive family but you know it's those kinds of little things that are about like what do i need to do today what do I need to do? Victoria, I am so excited to record my audiobook. I can't wait to hear it in my voice too. Um, but what do I need to do today? What do I need to do today that is before me? And, you know, who 
And then who can I pray for? Who maybe can I offer up? So instead of worrying about other people, instead of feeling as if it's our job to feel their feelings for them, feeling as though it's our job to fix things for them, to, you know, dive into the agony, who can, you know, who can we offer up in prayer? Who can we bless? Who can we send love to without getting, you know, going into the awfulizing and also going into the emotional soup? So this message here right now is very much about staying in the moment, breaking it down into bite-sized chunks, not starting to project into trying to do all the things and take on more than you can handle in a given day and really focusing on the one thing until it really is solid. So if you have got a copy of my book, then you know that inside of the book is access to this kick-ass kit called the Empathic Safety Kit. And in that kit are a lot of tools and a lot of resources. The thing is, every single one of these tools and resources is a tool that I've been working with for many, many years. And sort of the very core of my book talks about a meditation that I've been using myself for like 30 years now called the Earth Sky Meditation, where we run the energy of the Earth up through our body and we run the energy of the uh, earth of the sky down through our body and then we fill up with light and then we extend that light around us to create stronger filters and shields but by running the energy both up and down we can use the energy going down into the earth to release the stuff that is not serving us and to release other people's stuff so that we're not carrying it. We can inhale grace, inhale light, inhale support, inhale energy, and exhale the stuff that we do not need to be carrying around. That we can, and we can also exhale up to the sky and offer our prayers, our requests, invite the angels to take over and to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves, and particularly to do for others what is way outside of our wheelhouse. I've been getting really clear about what's my job, what's not my job, and knowing that I am too small, I am too puny to fix anything. I can support, I can witness, I can hold, I can hold space, I can have compassion. But it's really a power far greater than me that is going to bring about the miracles. And my job is to remember to recognize what's mine, what's not mine, and to do my job and to let go of the rest. So part of the prayer has also been, show me what's my job and help me to let go of that which is not. Help me to let go of the things that are beyond me. Help me to turn over the responsibilities that are above and beyond me. Show me what my job is to do. So going back to talking about Empathic Mastery and the safety kit that is included as the bonus gift when you buy the book. And right now the e-copy is like $4.44. It is like less than a happy meal. So if you go and you buy a copy of the book, you have immediate access to the safety kit. And in it is the Earth Sky Meditation. It's a recording of it that you can follow along and you can down you can download it and then do it. And what I want to say is it's not a one and done kind of thing. It's not like, oh, I listened to that meditation once and I'm all groovy and I figured it out. It's kind of like, I think it was J.P. Sears, you know, ultra spiritual, the com comedian guy who did this thing a while back where he was talking about like, you know, being so spiritual, like I am so spiritual. You know, that 20 minute meditation, I nailed it in 10. And the thing is, we live in a society that is so focused on moving through things fast that's not how we learn things that's not how we get where we need to go what we need to do is slow down and savor each bite and savor each breath and savor each tool and savor each exercise 
and work with it until it gets comfortable and work with it until it feels like something has shifted. Because that's how we move through this stuff, not by loading our plate with more and more and more, not by stockpiling case upon case of toilet paper, or in my case, jars of raspberry jam. (laughs) I just love the fact that like my stress response is like in freaking out about whether or not I'll ever have enough raspberry jam. Oh, God bless us human beings. So praying to be in the moment, praying to return to the here and now, using our breath to breathe into being here, turning to the empathic safety kit and the earth sky meditation and working or whatever tools work for you and using those tools and using them to the point where it starts to feel like things are shifting. Because I know when I was back in those days, when I was first starting to learn how not to be an emotional leader, that part of what was happening was that I was still, even though I was controlling my food, I was not not eating emotionally. And so I was constantly in this state of like panic and I could never enjoy or receive the support and the nourishment that was right there in front of me because I was constantly thinking about what next, what next, what next. So it's almost like right now, We have to allow the room for the miracles to unfold. We have to create the space in order for stuff to find its way. (sighs) So if you are needing a resource and you want like plenty to dig into and dive into, head over to empathicmasterybook.com, grab a copy of the book for yourself and sign up for the empathic safety kit, the bonus gift that's in there and work with those tools. And then after you've worked with them for a while, let me know what's happening for you. But don't necessarily just go and look it over once and then say I want more. Because I can tell you I've spent 30 years working with these tools. They're powerful tools. And we have to learn how to work with them well before we can add more. That's the thing. So (sighs) just thinking like right now, what do you say before I sign off? We just take a moment. Do me a favor, put your hands if you can, if it's appropriate, put your hands over your heart and just notice how present you are right here, right now. Are you in the past? in some kind of memory or some kind of ancestral thing or some kind of like historic story of like, you know, the bubonic plague or, you know, the 18, the 1918 Spanish flu outbreak or the AIDS epidemic or whatever, you know, are you someplace else or, or, and, or, and, or are you projecting into the future? Where are you? Is most of you here? What kind of percentage of you is here? I would say that I personally am somewhere in the vicinity of about, feels to me like I'm actually about 90 to 95% here. You know, I've got a little bit of myself, you know, thinking about actually my dad and uh, who's, who is in a nursing home right now and just is in kind of at the end stages of his life. So I'm just thinking a little bit about him. But for the most part, I'm mostly here. And maybe there's this tiny little bit of me that's like Spanish flu, 1918. So what we're going to do is we're just going to keep our hands over our heart. And the hands are kind of like an invitation. They're like a homing, homing beacon that are welcoming us back into our bodies. And so just taking, inhaling through your nose and breathing back into this moment right here right now just breathing into your body and as you exhale instead of you know if you need to this first exhale let's just release any of the tension or worry (sighs) breathing back into your body claiming your power and yourself back here now 
And if you've been worrying about anybody, if you've been taking on anybody else's craziness, if you've been feeling other people's agony, if you've been feeling like it's your job to make things better or fix things for people, just any and anybody who's like been worried that you've been picking up on as you exhale, give it back. I forgive you. I release you. I offer your... I, I, be, I witness you, I see you, I honor where you are, and I send you love, and I turn this over to my higher power. Do for them what they cannot do for themselves, and please take my hyper-responsibility away like, please relieve me of the sense of responsibility to fix the things that are far beyond me. Just breathing back into ourselves again. And breathing out that energy right around us so that we really are here and now. And... One of the affirmations that I've been working with a lot lately that I really like is, it is safe for me to be here now. It is safer when I am fully present and I relax. I can handle the situation with more ease when I allow myself to relax. And so I breathe into my body and being here now. And I breathe out any distress that's left over. I just let it go. Breathing. And now we're going to flip hands. Breathing into my body. Breathing into your body. And breathing out and just sort of exhaling more of yourself into this moment right here right now it is safe for me to be here i am willing to be willing to be here now that's the one that really helps me sometimes i am willing to be willing to be here now So as we sit here and we breathe, what is the thing that's on your plate right now? What have you got for the rest of the day or the rest of the night, or the rest of the morning, depending on where you are on this planet? What is, what's before you? I've got a dishwasher to unload. And then I've got some, and then I'm planning to spend some quality time hanging out with my husband. And then I will go to bed. And that, I think, is pretty much what's before me right now. Maybe I'll actually make a little bit more food because I haven't had a lot to eat today. And I'm just going to really focus on keeping it simple. So, you guys, what, do you, what are the simple, simple bite-sized chunks that are there for you right now? What can you do right now? What do you, when you tune in, as I ask you that question, what do you know? Do you need to do the dishes? Do you need to, um, you've already bought the book, but you haven't accessed the kit? Or you already have accessed the kit, but you haven't listened to the Earth Sky Meditation in a while, and you're like, that would be really helpful. Maybe I could go do that. It's like, what would work for you right now? If you feel like writing a comment below, let me know. And let's just breathe in to the here and now. And breathe out any tension or worry. I am willing to be willing to be here right now. Always can tap. Anytime we need to, I'm willing to be willing to be here right now. And it is safer for me to relax. I can handle any situation 
with greater ease when I am calm and relaxed. Oh, Amy, coloring in mandalas. Oh, I love coloring. I, as you imagine, have been doing a fair about amount of bead work lately and doing wire wrapping, and that's been really gratifying. And that also helps me to stay calm and feels really grounding. And, you know, going out and raking and hoeing and pruning and all those things. Just the stuff that reminds me like, oh yeah, life keeps going. It's okay. I'm okay. Right here, right now. Now, if anybody is here who has not already didn't learn the um, brief energy correction that I taught the other day, I'm going to show this before I sign off. I'm going to show you a really quick, simple exercise. I learned it from Robin Bilizarian, who is an amazing EFT trainer. And the thing I love about Robin is that Robin really understands how to chunk things down. Robin really understands that simple is better. Thank you, Victoria. Yeah, snuggling with Bob is always good. Oh, and uh, Burl, I hopefully I just said your name correctly. If I said it wrong, please forgive me. Um, yes, gardens are just heaven on earth. So Robin taught me this exercise at the spring energy event last weekend, and it is the bomb. So the first place you do, or what you do, is you take your hand and you place it over your navel on your belly and just inhale and exhale once. Then you put your hand on your chest and inhale and exhale again. You keep your hand on your belly. Now, if you've washed your hands and your hands are clean, you can put your fingers underneath your chin on the chin point and breathe in and out. If you didn't do that, you can touch the collarbone points instead and breathe in and out. So I'm showing you the extra points. And then after that, under the nose, or the alternative to the under the nose is the top of the head. And then just leaning forward a little bit, what you're gonna do is you're gonna reach behind on your spine with your fingers kind of over your butt crack and your hand, your palm of your hand kind of over your sacrum and you're just gonna breathe in and again, breathe out. And then because I always like to mix up and add ingredients to the recipe, I say shake it off like Taylor Swift. So just take your hands, shake it off and then hand on your belly again, breathe in and out. Heart. chin or collarbone, top of the head or under the nose, lower back, shake it off, belly, heart, really breathing into yourself, like you're recalling yourself back into your body right now chin, nose, mm. lower back, shake it off, belly, heart, chin, under the nose, lower back, Shake it off, belly, heart, chin, under the nose, lower back. Okay, shake it off, 
One last time. This time we're really going to breathe into our bodies and breathe into being here now. So belly, breathing into now. And exhaling into now. Heart, breathing into now. And exhaling all of the stuff that would keep you from being here and now. Chin or collarbone points, breathing into now. And exhaling into now. And either top of head or under the nose, breathing into the now, breathing right into your body, really claiming yourself right now. And exhaling. It is safe for me to be in my body. I am safer when I am in my body. I am safer when I relax. And you can put your hand on top of your head, your other hand on your lower back. What you're doing is you're completing your circuit and you are connecting yourself to yourself. And just feeling that connection, breathing in and breathing out. pretty much all I got for you right now. Keep it simple. Chunk it down. Be here now. Go grab a copy of the book by heading over to empathicmasterybook.com and sign up for the empathic safety kit that is in that book. And one thing at a time, one little shift at a time, one little exercise at a time, one little bite at a time, one little moment at a time, and stay here. And whenever you notice that you're taking on everybody else's stuff, whenever you notice that you're starting to feel like you're spinning out because you're thinking about the future, ask your higher power for help. Please take these burdens from me. I offer up this person, do for them what I cannot do for them, do for them what they cannot do for themselves. And please help me to be here now. Help me to behold miracles as they are unfolding. And help me to adapt. Help me to adjust. Help me to accept as we are going through this powerful time. Hey there, Amanda. So good to see you. I've been using your ashwagandha Melissa infusion oil on my feet nearly every night before bed. Actually, I'll recommend that to you guys is just if you have some lotion or massage oil or something that you can just anoint your feet and just rub your feet, like hold your feet and bring yourself into your body before you go to sleep. Okay, because I can always talk about more stuff. I could go on and on and on, but I really wanted to keep this as simple as possible and really just say, keep it simple. Just be here now. Chunk it down. Focus on the beauty. Think about what you can be grateful for. And we'll get through this one second at a time. Okay. So much love to all of you. I'll catch up with you guys later. And by the way, um, next Sunday, 6 p.m. ish, you know, might be 6.05, prayer circle. This one is going to be all about the ancestors. We're going to be working on healing for the ancestral lines. We're going to be working on prayers for connecting to the wisdom and the strength of our ancestors who've adored many things and have gone through it and also who have already crossed over and know it's all good and then also inviting and welcoming their support. So this coming Sunday, 6 p.m., 
We'll be having a prayer circle for ancestral work. Bring your prayer beads, bring your rosary, bring your mala, whatever you got that works for you. There is This is non-denominational safe space for anybody that wants to connect with spirit, with God, with goddess, with the divine, whatever name works for you. And before I forget to mention it, the other thing is, oh my God, you guys, I interviewed Clark Strand and Perdita Finn, who wrote The Way of the Rose. Ah, it was so, it is, I will just say, what an interview. And it's airing this Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern time over on EmpathicMasteryForTheSoul.com, which is my URL that leads you to the News for the Soul radio. So the Empathic Mastery Show is all about the reclaiming of the rosary and how it has ancient goddess-worshipping traditions underneath it. And so the rosary, the rosary is like encoded with magic. And I will say having really picked it up and starting to work with it intensely every day right now, this shit is the bomb. B-O-B-A-L-M. So seriously, please, 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 please check out this interview. It is going, it is absolutely off the hook amazing. It's one of the most exciting interviews and the most fun interviews. It was so, so good. And I've loved every interview I've had a chance to do, but this one was like off the hook good. And it's got so much really good, just like comforting, helpful, like restorative, amazing information. It's just that good. So if you, you know, head on over to, like you can jump over to either empathicmastery.com and just jump on and sign on to my list so you'll get notice notification about it if you're not already on my list. Um, and or if you are, just be sure to catch it. it. You can also listen to the archive later, but it's going to be, it's so, so, so good. And then on Sunday, Come join me here on Facebook Live and we will pray together and we will celebrate and we will ask our ancestors for their strength, their wisdom, and for their endurance and their tenacity and for their their ability to give us that that hope and the knowledge that, you know, they got through it. We will too. It's all good. So may you always remember that it is from the inter the eternal spectacular infinite sacred heart of love that we are born it is in the infinite spectacular sacred heart of love that we dwell now and it is to the infinite spectacular sacred heart that we shall return when we slip this mortal coil until we come back and start all over again. Rinse, lather, repeat. Okay, guys. So much love. And please hit the share button. Pass this along to other people who would find this useful. And for those who are so introverted <laughs> that they can't, that it would freak them out if you tagged them, please send this as a PM to them so that they know that there is support. Thank you so much. I'll catch up with you guys later. And I am just sending you all so much love. Thanks for being here.